I'm probably not doing a very good job. Surprising absolutely nobody. I don't even feel like being here today. Anybody out there even giving remotely <laughs> a care in the world as to what's going on in the Hard Rock Lunchbox? It's always a yeah, no. of course not. I definitely want to get to that, so I'm keeping. I'm actually going to keep an eye on the time this time, this today. I mean, probably not. Hey, AI, I, I, you didn't do a very good job on this one, and it's just like, hey, it's better than you, f- face. This is a no Sweden zone. It's funny because lies actually come from lying. Wait, hold on. What is going on here? I refuse to be to be derailed. I have no interest in opening that kind of worms today. That whole video that I watched was less than five minutes, and it took me ten minutes to talk about it. I didn't think we were going to get there, people, but here we are. Hard rock lunch box. Ah, greetings and salutations, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Hard Rock Lunchbox and, of course, the Top 20. It is a fairly uh, drizzly uh, March 28th, 2024 out there. And in here, I assume. How is everybody doing? I, uh, I have had an interesting morning. I'll get into some, <laughs> some of that, I suppose. As the uh, as the show goes on, I have stuff to talk about. I have stuff coming up this weekend. I have a whole pile of stuff I forgot to get to from last week. Like I just and then, uh, of course, I just I don't even feel like being here today. So. <laughs> yeah, totally not in the mood to do the show. I'm gonna do it anyway. Uh, I got a couple things, like I said, to talk about. Um, I'll go through those kind of quickly. Maybe we can get on to some music, um, and we'll just we'll just kind of do it uh, that way because why not? I know I've been uh, <clears throat> I've been trying to move the top twenty into a more of a music sort of space uh, and talk about that those sort of things. I just have not been able to because I cannot seem to control myself enough to not read at least some of the commentary that's going on. Uh, on the Hard Rock Lunchbox shorts and uh, and and the, t- the top twenty specifically, so I'm going to address some of that pretty quickly, um, just mainly because I I find it interesting and I don't know who's following along on any of this. You know, hopefully, hopefully none of you are, <laughs> and it's only my problem, and that's really all I could wish for. I mean, is anybody out there even giving remotely? <laughs> A care in the world as to what's going on in the Hard Rock Lunchbox. It's always a yeah, no. of course not. <laughs> why would? Why would you? No, but if you are, I do appreciate it. I did. Uh, I do want. I definitely want to save. I feel like I should set a timer because I want to talk about this. Um, this uh, video I was watching. It's it's from the Well. It's kind of like a spinoff of uh, Big Think or similar to like Big Think. Uh, and it's just, I always find these kinds of things interesting, and it's about confirmation bias, which I love. I love psychological stuff like that, especially as it's applicable and appropriate in this day and age, because it just, it's so interesting to me. So, um, but I want to get, I definitely want to get to that. So I'm keeping, I'm actually going to keep an eye on the time this time, this today. I mean, probably not, but like, I'll, I'll look in that direction. I have two times. I <laughs> can. I can watch both of them and see if I can get to some confirmation bias. But I did want to talk um, quickly about what's been going on with the Hard Rock Lunchbox uh, and specifically the top 20 kind of video shorts that have been going on. As I mentioned a few weeks ago, I started using that new AI program to basically uh, just add captions to the bumper and promotional thing that I always put on StrangerHood TV or I've been doing and I've been trying to put on StrangerHood TV. So now I'm actually putting it on StrangerHood TV, which is, of course, the only place you can see the full top 20 and all that other stuff. Uh, I've been posting it to like Instagram and all that other stuff just because it lets me do it. But as I said a couple weeks ago, the other thing this program does is it'll take your entire, in my case, 20 to 25 minute feed and dice it up into uh, less than 60 second spots uh, that it, the it is uh, co-pilot AI thinks is interesting enough to actually put out in the world. And I mean, for everything that I don't know about like algorithms and stuff like that, this thing really does because it's obviously getting somebody's attention because there are people that care about it and it's, or People don't care about it. People, uh, they they work people's nerves, which is which is interesting. Like it's it's, I think anybody around us 
in this day and age who actually just like kind of watches people around them. You just see so like how tuned in to everything like on people's phones and social media that people are. People live for likes and responses and some sort of feedback. Like it's, you know, it's it's part of like I feel alive kind of thing like which I totally understand. Like I really do, man. There there is there is an exceptional amount of loneliness in the main, you know, existence of a lot of people these days because as we become more isolated, uh, as we become more technologically connected, we become more physically isolated, right? So it makes sense that, that that sort of stuff would just naturally trend to happen. I know I, I have experienced it, um, you know, in my own existence and certainly with, with, you know, friends and family and stuff, but also just watching the population at large, plus the, like, wealth of information that's coming out of, uh, like, psychological and sociological studies about these things. Like, I was listening to some guy just super briefly as I was basically just walking through a room uh, talking about how they're really trying to get a lot of teenagers, like young teenagers, like off of social media at all until they've gone through puberty so that at least their brains can sort of not rewire so fast before they're ready to do it. Like, these are, like, this is a major talking point like me major concerns right like that are going on in the world so anybody that are feeling these things there's definitely not alone like there's a lot of it um out in the world but what i found is that like if you know what you're doing and i do not please don't mistake what i'm about to say for me knowing what i'm doing if you know what you're doing as in the algorithms like copilot or other ais or you know whoever else is doing the seo and search search uh, optimization and all and all the algorithms they really know how to tweak people up and get their attention. They understand like what hashtags are trending what day. They understand what comments or what what buzzwords or whatever are happening. Like I have no clue of any of that, which is why it's always interesting to me when I check out what's actually happening on the Hard Work Lunchbox. Like I just see like ten thousand views for this short, and four views for that short. It's like, well, hey AI, I, you didn't do a very good job on this one, and it's just like, hey, it's better than you, fuckface. So, um. I didn't say that, but it, it's coming. It's coming. Um, phrasing. But anyway, so I just, I find it kind of interesting as I, as I go through. But, um, what was, I guess what was particular, I know I was talking about the Sweden thing a couple weeks ago. I don't even want to talk about it again because I don't want to piss off any more Swedes. I think I apologized enough. Uh, I corrected, you know, any correction I had to make. I did read right from the Swedish government website to back up the stuff that I was po- talking about specifically. I, I apologize for the stuff that I got wrong about, like, where you do have to pay for some stuff eventually, which totally makes sense. I was definitely t- I was being careless with the details, the level of detail I was using. I, was, I wasn't incorrect in anything. I wasn't complete enough in my discussion based on... What is being put out by the Swedish government? I cannot speak to what's actually happening on the ground in Stockholm because I'm not there. I can only do what information I have. I did ask some people, uh, not in the main one, but eventually, like, hey, could you just tell me what's actually true? And I didn't really hear anything back, and it's fine. And I already, and I promised I wasn't going to talk about Sweden. I've already done that, so I'm going to stop. This is a no Sweden zone from now on until the next time I talk about Sweden. But um, one of the things that really sort of bothered me, disturbed me, caught my attention is totally um, a statement on the moron confidence that is going on in the world today, uh, thanks to a lot of, a big portion of our um, diploma divide, um, is I actually said something that was factually correct about... um, a video I had seen, a short I had seen about a Trump, a Trump supporter. He had a MAGA hat on, so like, I don't want to racially profile anybody, but it looked like a Trump supporter. He had the hat on. He was at a Trump rally, and what he was saying about, you know, kind of like being an originalist about the Constitution and how white men are the only ones that should vote and stuff like that. And even though he got some stuff wrong, I said I was paraphrasing stuff, and people lost their fucking mind, because apparently paraphrasing isn't good enough anymore, and one comment even went, comment even went so far as to say, oh, paraphrasing, that's how people start spreading lies, and like, that's not what it is, like, it's funny, because lies actually come from lying, you'll hear it, it's, it's subtle, it's like, la, la, it's got that sound in it, in both of them, like, lying causes lies, paraphrasing does not, paraphrasing is actually a really good thing, uh, if you use proper because it can take a complex idea and sometimes break it down and make things a little bit more clear for people. Clear for people that clearly don't understand common 
and stuff, which apparently most of my audience, not you guys, you guys are fine, but apparently most of the audience that is checking out the shorts on YouTube are. And the problem with it was is that people just assumed because they didn't agree with what I was saying or what I had what I was saying this person had said that I was lying, which is just bananas. Like, lying is not really my forte, nor do I need to come here and spend any time whatsoever lying to you about, you know, selling my whatever agenda, because I just don't give a shit enough. I'm telling you things that I think are important. I am not lying about them. I have no reason to. I don't really have an agenda to do that other than to maybe have people think things through before they speak which is exactly my point because the one like i said like the one dude was talking about how paraphrasing is just the beginning of lying and it's just not the way that that works and to make it a simple example for any dummies that are going to watch this later like if you watch the weather and the weatherman like my guy byron miranda man he's the best right from new york city like I love that guy. Um, and you could argue whether or not he's the best. I'm sure the weather weather person in your area is the best for you, and that's great. I'm not here to make any weather uh, person, uh, you know, uh, enemies or anything. I don't care. But if Byron comes on and says, hey, today it's going to be uh, 72 degrees in Central Park and or LaGuardia, because he uses LaGuardia for, you know, the people on Long Island and stuff like that. If it's going to be 72 degrees uh, and windy, uh, by the way, It's not going to be because it's already rainy and crappy outside. But if he comes on, he says it's going to be 72 degrees and windy. And then tomorrow it's going to snow and be at four degrees. Now, if I'm going to communicate that information, I can do one of two things. I can do one of three things, but I'll mainly do the third one is just completely lie. Right. Which is I already said I'm not going to do. So the other two things are this. I can direct quote, not give you the information like quickly. But I can direct quote and tell you exactly what he said from a transcript, or I can use my brain, one of the most powerful things on the planet, not just my brain, most human brains, not all brains, please don't make that mistake. And I can kind of break down what he said to you and be like, it's going to be sunny today, uh, but it's going to really snow tomorrow, so maybe you should get out. So like, that's paraphrasing. Right? I'm not telling you exactly what he said, but I'm giving you the gist of what he said. If I wanted to do even better, I could be like, hey, he says it's going to be just like yesterday out, which he did not say at all. But if it was 72 degrees yesterday and 72 degrees today, I can say that. That's paraphrasing. That's basically saying the gist of what somebody has said. And sometimes you can use it to make those things clearer or more effective to communicate. So when I paraphrase something, that's what I'm doing. When I guess these other people that don't understand what paraphrasing is, when they paraphrase stuff, I guess they're lying. And I guess that's what people are used to in this whole sort of moron confidence echo sphere that we are now living in for some reason, which I, for the life of me, cannot figure out. I have never, ever in my entire life wanted to be stupid or dumb or ill-informed or misinformed i have always wanted to understand things and i think that is a question for people that have that sort of need to know things and desire to know things that sort of innate intelligence to want to learn as opposed to people that just want to believe what they want to believe which brings me to and in time and in and in enough time for the confirmation bias thing that i wanted to talk about I didn't think we were going to get there, people, but here we are. (laughs) Oh, man. Um, So, what? uh, wait, hold on. What is going on here? Let's see. Yep, no, this is still playing. All right, cool. Um, Sorry, just checking all my connections because it looked a little light here in the chat. I wasn't sure what was happening, uh, but maybe maybe it's something. I don't know if the chat's not working. Sorry. Let me get back to it. I refuse. I refuse. <laughs> um, I refuse to be to be derailed by what's happening over there in the chat. So here's the thing: I was thinking, um, I, I do not. I, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing like this is true. I'm I'm not sure I'm pronouncing this woman's name correctly. It looked like Tally Shiro. Could be Sharat. Could be Tali. I, I don't know. It's T L I. Uh, S H A R O T, and she does uh, she does a, a short video. I'm sure there was probably more to it because it looked edited, but it was quick. It wasn't even a short; like this was the longer version of the short. Um, so, um, so she's talking about confirmation bias and some studies that actually probably are going to make some sense to. Um, 
they're probably going to make some sense to anybody that's given some thought to the way the confirmation biases work, right? So what she's talking about specifically is uh, the, the beginning of it. She's talking about how um, people hold on to their their information, right? That what they believe, right? And humans tend to not use... The, so, sorry, her entire premise is humans tend to not use their intelligence to further their understanding, but rather confirm their biases. That is what these studies are showing, right? So that makes sense. We, we've seen this. I mean, Adam Ruins, everything was talking about that, where people just, when you challenge people's beliefs, they will double down on those beliefs, even in the face of factual, knowable truths. And she talks a little bit about climate change, and she uses that example, because climate change is pretty much all but universally accepted by every major scientific organization on the planet. Yep. Are there a couple of whatever? Uh, according to Neil deGrasse Tyson, there aren't even a couple of defectors from that anymore. There, but that's what he said. That's not what I'm saying. Uh, but I know for a fact that the majority of people in the scientific community believe that climate change is a happening and b a man-made occurrence. Now you can argue that it happens naturally too. I don't think people are ruling that out, but they're saying that what's happening right now is the main uh, the function of greenhouse gases and stuff caused by us. Fine. Not here to argue that. I'm here to say that that is the generally accepted thing from the scientific community, and yet hovering around 50 percent of the people, and you know Americans at least, don't believe it. Don't believe that to be true. I'm telling you this because that is statistic, statistical fact. I am not making that up. I am not paraphrasing anything. I'm telling you what the statistics on that are. That's important for this setup. So if you have 50 percent of the people that don't believe that climate change is a man-made occurrence, you'll have roughly 50% of the people that do. So what this study was talking about in terms of confirmation biases is they presented two different stories to each of the groups, right? Um, so let's just take the people that don't believe uh, that climate change is man-made. So they tell them uh, one thing. They'd say, okay, well, researchers have found that um, climate change really isn't as affected by man as they thought it's more about like volcanoes and like bio stuff and all you know changes in the earth whatever so they told half of those people that and then they told the other half hey researchers have found that actually it's way worse than they thought that you know nothing none of the volcano stuff uh none of the dinosaurs asteroids whatever earth processes are causing anything it's almost all man-made so these are people that don't believe that climate change is man-made they've told them two different stories that researchers have found that it's not man-made <clears throat> and researchers have found that it's absolutely man-made so what happens in these confirmation bias experiments is that when you tell somebody that doesn't believe something something that doesn't jive with what they're believing they don't even nudge on the belief scale at all like it just it just doesn't even change anything it doesn't waver they don't actually double down and they don't actually you know back off but if you tell somebody something that goes with their internal beliefs they go way way further into that belief so the people that you that they told that uh climate change turns out isn't so man-made those people are now way further towards not believing that man uh, man can't has anything to do with it and they answer way more strongly that you know all the stuff about climate change is bullshit and all that other stuff and the same is true on the other side so you tell people that totally believe that you know man is responsible for mankind is responsible for human excuse me i should stop doing that humankind is responsible for uh climate change you tell them that researchers have found that it's actually not so much that, that it's all this other stuff they don't they don't change their opinions but as soon as you tell them like yep it's totally man-made human made humankind made and all that other stuff they go way off the rails way off the chart about like it's you know 99 percent like we got to do something tomorrow all that other stuff right so <clears throat> that's confirmation bias it's they sh you see it in 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 study after study after study after study uh what i found interesting on that is that it doesn't necessarily double you down if you're fighting against it uh, if you're arguing against it, you're presenting stuff against it, which I always thought to be true and might still be true in some places, because as you have to defend stuff, you'll talk yourself into it more and more. Uh, those were the studies that you would see like on Adam Ruins Everything, but these are the newer studies that I found kind of interesting. Maybe it's specific to these kind of things. But the, uh, the one thing that uh, she finished her talk on that I was really, really kind of impressed with, uh, especially the way, as somebody that's done psychological experiments, like in college and stuff, 
I found this study to be done in a very interesting way, and I would love to follow up with it more. Uh, so what they were doing is they were taking, um, they were taking parents. Uh, I think. I believe it was in California. I, I, I'm going to remember to post the link to this video when I put this on the top 20. Uh, so next week you'll be able to just click to it and, and check it out because I think it's I think it's worth watching. Very interesting. Um, so I think it was I think it was parents in California that were opposed to vaccines, uh, and and she was referencing specifically that these parents were opposed to vaccines because of the autism risk. I have no interest in opening that kind of worms today. Jimmy, is that... Hold on a second. Jimmy, is that something you want to talk about? Autism and vaccines? Yeah. Smart. I'm going to step out of that one, too. I'm just telling you the premise of the experiment. Parents in California who are not vaccinating their children because they're afraid of the links to autism. That's your that's your subject population. So here's what they did. They split them into two groups, probably more, but for the pur- purposes of what she was talking about, they split them into two groups. And so these are people with beliefs that they're not going to vaccinate their children against you know certain diseases because they're worried about the links to autism. They tell half of them, or they don't even tell them, they, they argue the statistics on autism and vaccines with people. Not trying to really convince anybody, here's the information, here's your statistic rate, you know, autism occurs in the natural rate in vaccinated people as it does in the rest of the whatever, all that stuff. No change. No change in the subject. No, uh, when I say no change, by the way, there's a difference between nothing and significant changes. That's It's just a psychological statistical analysis. Like if you don't get over a certain amount of, you know, sta- if like things over a certain amount of st- standard deviations get tossed out because they're outliers and stuff like that. These are just... It's not if it's not st- statistically significant, then I'm not really interested, uh, and scientists really aren't either. So when I'm saying nothing happened, nothing uh, significantly happened. So no changes in their uh, in their in their held beliefs about vaccines and autism. But um, what they did is they told the other half. They kind of went through the uh, the information and stats on some of the diseases that they would be vaccinating against. Something, you know, some stuff that's that's deadly or dangerous, like measles can kill you, right? Like, it shouldn't, but it can. Smallpox can. We had some smallpox here in uh, uh, up in New York State not too long ago because there was just an outbreak of people that weren't uh, getting vaccinated. Actually, I think, I believe that was the impetus for the new law that was, like, requiring all these vaccines in New York State and didn't even give religious or medical exemptions which was you know ridiculous because i'm a i'm opposed to forced vaccinations i always have been i was long before covid forced vaccinations and i I used to argue with people like that especially floridians that would just be like you can't force us to you know get all these vaccines and then i would send them you know the education department from the florida from florida state the department of education about all the forced vaccines that they give their kids and it's like when you get your house in order you can talk to me about covid vaccines but i am an og vaccine vaccine not getter so let's let's not you know or or let's not switch topics when i'm trying to talk about something else so (laughs) what she what what they did and what you what you described is they go through with these parents like all the dangers and risks of these diseases and what they found was yeah most of those parents ended up saying and i don't know if how they followed up in years, but they uh, saying that they were they were more inclined to go get these vaccines now. And the the point of that entire experiment is sometimes you really can't argue people head on into their beliefs because you'll just you know you're just kind of always hitting whatever they want. But if you kind of explain things in a different way, then you can actually reach people that because that's not what their firm belief is. It's not like people are like measles doesn't kill anybody. It's Vaccines cause cause autism, right? So if you're like, okay, well, whether they do or not, here's the measles that's going to kill your kid, and all of a sudden you're like, oh my god, like that's a you know real thing, you know that kind of stuff. So it was interesting because the the whole conclusion is basically that we as humans we use our intelligence to not necessarily grow or learn or educate ourselves, but we are now in an age where we're using our intelligence, such as it is on most people to confirm our biases even more. And I'm telling you this because it is fucking dangerous to do that. And if you find yourself doing that, just denying what people are saying, like right off right off the bat, right out of the gate, 
you got to wonder, like, what exactly it is that you're missing. If you're not smart enough to sort of take in stuff and then really process it for the information that it is, maybe you shouldn't be clinging too hard to stuff that you believe. As I've said for years, for every A student out there, there's a D and an F student. And it usually tends to be pretty fairly mixed. So where are you on that curve? If you're a C or lower... Maybe you should give a listen to something that other people say. I'm not saying you have to just believe people. Just give it a listen. See what they say. See if it passes the sniff test. Maybe there's something out there. And for everybody that's out there just trying to convince people of why they're wrong about stuff, maybe just stop. Maybe just try and convince them of other reasons that other things could be correct. I got a lot of work to do in that area because I am definitely a hit the nail with a hammer kind of guy just because I'm too tired of dealing with all the stupid, stupid people that I have to deal with. And they're all of a sudden phony intelligence because somebody dumber than them agreed with them. Like that, that doesn't make you smart, right? Like if you say something and your stupid friend agrees with you, like I'd worry about that. Ever multiply two negatives together? You get a positive? Well, you know, it's, it's kind of like one of those things. So don't like, don't do that. Like, that's a bad idea. Like, you can you can lean towards smarter people. And like I, like I say always, just use the sniff test, the common sense test, all that other stuff. And, but, yeah, let's. that's what I wanted to talk about. Like I said, I'll put that link in the video if I remember. Uh, I'll put that link in the description of the video because I thought it was interesting, thought it was important. I will say that whole video that I watched was less than five minutes, and it took me ten minutes to talk about it. So I'm probably not doing a very good job. Surprising absolutely nobody. You know who probably will be doing a good job? Uh, the gang and Pathmaker, who had their CD release show this Saturday night. Unfortunately, Rebel 9 will be upstate at the garage at Lucy's in Pleasantville, so we will not be in attendance, but there will be plenty of other good bands that will be. I expect a full report from everybody that's going by next week to let me know how, they, uh, how it played out live and how the show went and how the venue went. I've never been to this particular one, uh, venue, so I'd like to know how that goes. But it's time for me to stop talking and play you a little bit of Pathmaker because I am cool like that. And uh, yeah, man, I'll just see you on the other side.